Okay, moving forward here, we're going to make some aesthetic changes for the branding tag. So I'm going to select the tag, select the tag for branding. I would have a branding rule here, so I don't have to make a new rule because I already have a rule. So I'm going to double click branding tag, and from the box bottom, border bottom, we're going to say border bottom, we're going to give this the same solid two pixels in the same color as the wrapper tag. So we're going to sample that same color here, and that puts a border at the bottom. Okay, make a change, save a change. Okay, so now the site, the site is starting to come together here. We started out basically with no content. We just basically named our div tags. We moved across the page and created rules for these tags. This is how simple it is to create a site. It's not rocket science, but you have to start thinking the way Dreamweaver thinks. And that's what I do with my videos. I involve you in the thinking, a lot of repetitive things. Select the tag, make a rule, select the tag, make a rule. If the only thing you bring away from my videos is that simple process of selecting the tag, making the rule, you're halfway there. Because most people have been working this program for years, they don't get it. These books make it so confusing. These other online videos make it so confusing. I make it so simple and enjoyable, and it really is this simple. Stay away from the code. You don't need to touch the code. Select the tag, make a rule inside the dialog box. So let's build the Google Ads. So for Google Ads, we're going to say that's going to be a header tag. Incidentally, for search engine purposes in optimization, each div tag should start with a header tag followed by an h2 tag if in fact that's going to be the subtext of the h tag because that's how the search engines categorize and list your content h1 tag h2 tag h3 tag etc 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 so in this particular case i'm just going to take some content here i'm going to copy and i'm going to paste and I'm going to copy and paste this a couple of times. I'm going to return, key, paste, return, key, paste, return, key, paste. Now, of course, for those of you that know about this, if this is a real Google ad, you would copy and paste the code from Google into here, and it generates those ads by itself. But we're just basically making this a static placeholder for Google ads. Okay, so now in this particular case, I do like the font, I do like the size, but I don't like the uppercase and I don't like the color. So once again, I can go and make an H1 rule specifically for a Google ad. Select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. So we're going to say H1 Google ads is going to be, I do like the size, I don't like the case. I'm going to make this capitalized. Okay. Now in this particular case, I'm going to make this black. So let's make the type black black against yellow will pop out a little bit better <clears throat> okay in addition to this i want to have so i selected the tag for h1 h1 for google ads make a change save a change now what i want to do with my content for my p for paragraph here i want to separate each paragraph with a black dotted line so how do i do that very simple very very simple I select the tag. What's the name of this tag? It's the P tag. The P tag paragraph specifically for Google Ads. So I can make a rule for that. Incidentally, the Google Ads H1 should appear below Google Ads. Okay, so I'm going to select the P tag. Select the tag. Make a rule. Select the tag. Make a rule. Okay, at 2 o'clock in the morning when you're trying to sleep, I want you to hear my voice saying, select the tag, make the rule. Select the tag, make the rule. Select the tag, make the rule. You wake up refreshed, I guarantee you. Okay, hit okay. Now, what I want to have happen here, I just want to put a black dotted line below the paragraph. Very simple, how do I do this? Based on these choices, border, border, bottom, bottom dotted, or dashed, we said dotted, dotted. Two pixels by default, it's gonna to default to black because my content is black. The text content is black. If my text content was red, this line would have been red. If my paragraph was blue, the line would have been blue, okay? Now, I don't want this line smashing against the paragraph, so I go to box section, section box bottom. Let's make this 1.2 M spaces. So there is my space at the bottom of my paragraph. Now, very important step here, and this is an aesthetic thing, okay? These lines are separating the ads. Now, aesthetically, if this is the last ad, I shouldn't have a line here. So how do I get rid of the line for just this paragraph? Well, this is the paragraph, this is the paragraph, this is the paragraph. So how do I do that? Okay, 
I select the tag and I ID that paragraph. Now in this particular case, we could use a class tag for this, but it's the last one. And guess what, guys? There's only one first and one last. So I can select the tag, give it an ID, and call it what it is, which is last ad. Makes sense to me. It's my last ad. So I ID that. Select the tag. Make a rule. Select the tag. Make a rule. Less specific. Hit OK. Now, again, I got to pay attention to the fact of... I want this border at the bottom. I don't want a border at the bottom. So I can simply say none. That gets rid of the border at the bottom. But, but, very important step here, the Google ad paragraph at the bottom, when it had a line here, it had spacing at the bottom. I don't want to have border spacer at the bottom. I don't want a border spacing at the bottom. So what do I put here for value? I need to put in zero. Zero overrides the value that was there for the parent. This is the child tag. This is the child tag for the P for paragraph. So now that space disappears. Okay. Now aesthetically, this is just color on top of color, so you really can't see there's an extra space there. But if we went back to Google Ads and we made this a darker version of this yellow, so how, how can I do that? Go to background color, select the color, go to the color wheel, and make it darker. So this is now a darker version of that color. Okay, so now I can see that this had an extra space that I got rid of by making P for paragraph at the bottom of the paragraph. I'm sorry, last at ID tag, last at at the bottom of the paragraph, I set it to zero. So again, if you don't set this to zero, you're going to have extra space here. I don't want to have this extra space here, so I need to put in zero. Okay, good habit to get into. Make a change, save a change. Okay. Now, if in fact your content is going this long, it's probably going to make total sense that your Google ads are going this long as well. So your Google ads would just continue to float down. Okay, So the site is really starting to come together. We start out with basic bread and butter, no content. We build this totally from scratch using simple, simple step-by-step -step, step techniques. Use my time-tested method of involving you in the thinking. Think Dreamweaver. This is a great exercise in how I got started with basically nothing and create a page from scratch. Now, one note I want to point out to you, and a lot of people are not aware of this, but if you go to the view menu, view menu toolbars, I have something called style rendering turn on. Now, this is not a default. This doesn't come on by default. By default, style rendering is turned off. Now, how does that help or hurt me? Well, in this particular case, I always want to keep view toolbar start rendering turn on. Therefore, I can come back up here to the top left hand menu and I can click this. This is going to turn my CSS off. Now, this is very valuable information, guys, because sometimes when you're trying to build a site and things don't happen or work out the right way, it's because the CSS, sometimes you can't get your cursor into that place because the CSS is getting in the way. So if you come up here to this icon right here, you can choose to turn your CSS temporarily off, which it is now, or on off on. The other thing I want to share with you too, if you go to say your fire, this is something you do in Firefox. If you go to Yahoo as an example, like we're not a spell Yahoo, that would be good. Okay. So this is what the page looks like with CSS. With with Firefox, I can go to view page style and turn my page style off. This is what the page looks like with no CSS. It's just content from top to bottom. So this will give you a good hint on how the page was structured, how the page is put together. So if you go to the IBM site, IBM, this is what the site looks like with no rules, no CSS rules. This is what the site looks like with CSS rules. Okay, so the CSS, go back to Dreamweaver for a second, CSS controls the content placement. It doesn't change the content, it changes the content's placement. So this is what the page looks like with CSS content placement. This is what the page looks like, which is basically content on the page. Content flowing from top to bottom, top to bottom. So a good, well-designed CSS page has nothing out here to the right. As far as if you see things that are staggering to the right, that means the person used tables. That's the old school way of doing this. Okay, so we want to basically use proper CSS rules to create our site. 
it's a more flexible way to do things, plus it's search engine friendly. So before we close here, I just want to point out to you that the way that this page was designed, it's very, very simple setup, guys, because now you have flexibility. You don't want to create a site where you say, well, this client puts their site nav up here, and this client puts their site nav down here, or this client puts their body tag. You want to see us as rule structure to flow exactly how the page is built. So it starts with asterisk tag followed by the body tag. So the HTML and CSS should be on top followed by the wrapper tag and all its subsequent ID tags fall on the bottom. This way, very important step here, guys, you can have a site maybe you built six months ago and now you need to make changes to it. Very common thing to be able to do. You don't want to get out your NASA space trajectory heading to figure out how did I create this site? This is a simple roadmap on how this site was created. It was created from top to bottom, wrapper followed by branding, followed by site now, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this content here, it should basically flow with the content of the page. Enjoy your day. Please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Adobe Videos. Uh, subscribe. I'm going to be doing some really cool things. I'm also going to be offering some premium services. I know a lot of you guys have requested more stuff, more in-depth stuff. We're going to be doing e-commerce sites, my PHP, my SQL sites. I'm going to start charging not a lot for that. We're probably talking about a full year subscription for about the $129, $149 range or less. We'll see what happens. I'll also offer free web hosting as well for my subscribers uh, that sign up for my premium service. So have a good day. Uh, think Dreamweaver. Thinkdreamweaver.com. My name is Robert. Thank you.